Hey guys, it's so nice sitting down in a video. I feel so comfortable. I'm just like la, la, la. Right now I'm sitting at my new desk. I'm sitting in my new chair so I can finally edit and it's so comfortable. It's really nice. I can look out the window while I edit. It's great. Yeah, this is my first sit down video in ages. The background seems a little plain, but we're working on it. This is my apartment and uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today about just that, apartments. I personally have been through the struggles of finding apartments in Japan and you know, there's different levels of struggle for everyone and there's different requirements and different situations. So I wanted to kind of talk about my experience, what I've learned and yeah, kind of some suggestions and places you can go to find good apartments. This whole thing is just from my own opinion and my own experiences. So if you guys have any corrections or things that you want to add, please leave them in the comments down below and we can have a chat. Also, if any of you are Australians and are thinking of coming on the working holiday visa, this video is definitely for you because the, it's a very particular set of circumstances with that visa, so I can kind of help you out a little bit with what's going to happen. Even if you aren't thinking of moving to Japan, come along and learn about Japanese apartments and housing and kind of options that we have here. So I'll just quickly sum up at the start why getting apartments in Japan can be a bit of a struggle. Uh, and just a few simple points. <laughs> so first of all, uh, some places, quite a lot of places actually, don't allow foreigners. There's a few reasons for this, I don't know all of them, but I think some people believe that, you know, we're going to break a contract and go back home to our own countries. We're, foreigners aren't really seen as very permanent here sometimes. There's that we don't really sort our trash out well. We're not like the ideal citizen because a lot of the time we don't really know what we're doing. That's the kind of feeling that I think that some people have. So that's why I guess as well if you don't have a Japanese spouse, why it's hard to go with Japanese apartment companies. A lot of the times we're kind of forced to go with like English friendly, foreigner friendly apartment companies. And a lot of the times these guys can really charge a lot extra than a normal Japanese apartment company. Another thing that makes it difficult are visas. It really depends on what visa you're on as to what kind of housing you can get. I'm mainly talking about this because of the Australian Working Holiday Visa, which is only six months at a time, which you can renew twice, so you can be here for like a year and a half, but because on your visa it says six months, a lot of places won't give you a contract unless you have a year-long visa, so that really makes things difficult as well. Another thing that makes it difficult is guarantors. I haven't had to go through this because I haven't really tried to go through many Japanese housing agencies or anything, but a lot of people expect you to have a guarantor. A guarantor, I believe, is supposed to be Japanese and have lived here for a really long time and be a citizen or something like that. They are supposed to sign and basically be responsible for you if you leave, so they will pay everything that you owe, that kind of thing. It's a really big ask of someone. A Japanese person will usually pick like family members or something, but as a foreigner you don't really have that and so you have to pay guarantor companies which can charge a lot of money as well. And that leads me to another thing that's really difficult, extra costs. So when you move into somewhere, a lot of places expect different things, but usually there's key money, guarantor money, uh, the deposit, and then there'll be all these extra things like in insurance, uh, there's just a lot of extra things. So when you move into somewhere, uh, the moving costs can be very extreme. Now this sounds all negative, I don't really want to make this a negative video, I just want to let you know kind of the reality of what you're stepping into and get you ready for it and also give you some advice on how to avoid going through all that crap. <laughs> First of all, I'm just going to talk about my experience a little bit when I first came to Japan on the working holiday visa, which was the six month visa. The only apartment agencies I could go with were kind of foreigner friendly, month to month contract, really high charge places. And, and they were always super small. But the thing is, I really wanted to live in Tokyo itself. I didn't know much about the outer skirts or anything about each suburb really so I was just aiming to be like on the Yamanote line because I'd just come to Japan. So that's kind of how I ended up in this eight square meter tiny apartment because my visa couldn't really get me anything else. There were much worse options as well I should add, like much worse. Um, even the same building had the same tiny apartment but without the loft. It was a bit cheaper but it was just you just fold out a mattress on that little corridor floor every night which is insane. Sometimes it's unavoidable. So the kind of agencies that provide that, I'll name a few, there's uh, there's Leo Palace, 
there's Fujimi House, there's Sakura House. Yeah, there's a bunch of companies out there which will provide really, really small accommodation for really high price, but usually it's very hard to find another alternative. So just so you know, those are options are there uh, if you are on the working holiday visa. But also those options are good if you just come to Japan and you don't know where to go. <laughs> they're very easy, they're very quick to set up, and if you just need temporary accommodation for like a month or two, you can go to one of those while you find an actual apartment. They include free Wi-Fi and gas and water and everything. All the bills are included, so that's why those are good for short term. And overall, the experience with them was convenient, but they are completely not suitable for people living in Japan long term. I was at mine for about 11 months, which made me go insane. Uh, and it was not great to live in such a tiny apartment. But you know, when you've got no other options, you just gotta do what you gotta do. I know that Leo Palace does do bigger apartments than the place that I was in, but I want you to know that good places do exist, you just gotta keep looking. Another option out there for people is share houses. Uh, there are actually a lot of share houses in Tokyo, a lot of people have a great time in share houses, and uh, there's definitely gonna be ones that are more flexible with visas, I think. When I first came to Japan, I didn't look into share houses because I just didn't wanna live with anybody else. I really, really just wanted to live by myself, so I kind of sacrificed space uh, in order to live alone. I know that if you did spend money on a share house, you would probably get more space than than what I was living with. Share houses are also good if you come to Japan and you are working up and saving money to get your own place. If you just need somewhere to start out, probably go a share house. It's a lot cheaper and easier. And there are also more luxurious share houses. You can stay at uh, social apartments, I think it's called. You still have to pay quite a bit for them, but it's also good if you want to have a nice living space and you work better around people. So you can go and stay with them and they have like common areas and kitchens and stuff like that. So I think those are some of the nicest share houses you can get. But there's going to be definitely cheaper ones out there, you just got to look a little bit. Now that's all for kind of people coming on either six month visas or without so much money. If you have a longer visa, I'd probably recommend going to Gaijinpot, the apartment site. If you've been looking for apartments, you probably already know about this one. But there's some actually really good gems on there. It's so good. My apartment that I actually live in was on Gaijin Pod. There's some really good stuff if you just know exactly how to find what you're looking for. And the best thing about Gaijin Pod is they're all going to be foreigner friendly, so you don't have to go through the struggle of asking each apartment if you can go and live there. They have a huge range of prices that you can look at and a huge range of houses, so that one is really good if you want to go and just browse the kind of options that are available. Actually, there's one that I recommend the most to people. I haven't used it, but most of my friends have used it and found really good cheap places. It's called Mini Mini. They don't really have like an online site where you can look for houses. They do have one that's in Japanese, but that one they can't guarantee if they're foreigner friendly or not. But uh, they have a lot of branches around Tokyo. So if you come to Tokyo and stay somewhere for like a month or two while you figure it out, you can go to Mini Mini and they'll search and find foreigner friendly apartments for you. And I know people who had like 40,000 yen rent, 40 to 50,000 yen rent a month, uh, which, you know, for Tokyo is like really good. <laughs> and you know, it was their own apartments with little kitchens and even balconies and things like that. So many, many, you can really find a good deal. You just need to have the patience and find a branch and really work through all the options that you have. If you search with Gaijin Pot or Mini Mini. I think you can search for places that don't need a guarantor or key money. I think that you can do that. I mean, the moving costs are still kind of expensive, but definitely not as expensive as if you need those things. Another tip that I have is it is actually still convenient to live not in the middle of Tokyo <laughs> on the Yamanote line. A lot of people I know who live in Tokyo, especially for long term, live either outside of Tokyo or just like a little bit out of Tokyo in kind of areas that aren't close to the big city places. Uh, this means that rent is heaps cheaper and the houses are definitely bigger. So you have a lot more options and it also, I don't know, I like living just out of Tokyo because it's more of a community. There's a lot more people that wanna talk to you. It's less busy, it's less rush, but still the city is like 15, 20 minutes away. So it's really convenient. And I do recommend looking not just in your favorite city areas. And a big point of advice I have is just give it time, like make sure you spend a lot of time looking. Coming from my old place, I searched for an apartment for about five months and slowly, you know, went crazy. But um, yeah, it took me five months of going to apartment agencies and really not giving in. I didn't want to give in and get a place that was, cause in my mind I was like, 16 square meters, that's gonna be my dream. I need something, I'm not going below 16 square meters. 
and everywhere I went was like, no, you can't, you can't afford this, you can't afford that. Your visa's not good enough, we can't do anything for you, so just, uh, but didn't give up. Never give up. <laughs> there are so many sites that I have not mentioned. Uh, quite a few of the sites that I haven't mentioned are more, you know, for people who have quite a bit of money. If you have money, that's so good and you're gonna be totally fine. If you don't mind spending quite a bit on rent, uh, there are so many websites for you. One thing I wanna really encourage you to do is just search. Just search your guts out on the internet because there are so many options that I didn't talk about and you might find a new one that I've never seen before. But I'll just say, when you do find an apartment and you do move in and it's all done, the stress being over, it's so good to just explore your new neighborhood, meet people, decorate your apartment, it's the best feeling, honestly. I mean, moving apartments in any country is stressful, yet let alone Japan, where everything's different and crazy and you don't know what you're looking for. If you are moving to Japan or if you are moving house or apartment in Japan, good luck. Uh, I hope it goes really well. And if it gets stressful, just take a moment. It's gonna be okay. There are plenty of options here. You just gotta, you just gotta fight through. You're gonna be totally fine. As I said before, these are just my own opinions and personal experiences. Uh, if you have anything else you want to add to this, just leave it in the comments down below. And yeah, we can have a discussion and talk about housing in Japan. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. Hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Or not like this, but like this if you like it, if that makes sense. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Janet!